guys, and welcome to Young Adult Matters. And thank you, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in to today's show. Talking about time, <clears throat> you know, today we're talking about organization. And whether it's, you know, our busy lives with work, school, church, family, volunteer, you know, plus all our daily activities, that's what we wanted to talk about today. You know, we're, we have so many scheduled uh, activities and then, you know, add in maybe some stress, your car breaks down, you need to find a new job, different things like that and kind of ruffles our feathers. And, you know, it's no wonder why any little thing kind of throws us off a little bit. And according to Vital Stats, 60% of Americans say that they don't have enough time for everything. So again, thank you for your time tuning in here to Young Adult Matters. I'm here today with Miguel, Ruby, and with Joey. So welcome on the show, guys. Good to be here. <clears throat> thank you. You know, we, we always talk about time, and, and it always seems like whenever we, we meet up with someone or talk to someone, it's always like, you know, the issue kind of comes up, you know, where I need more time or I wish I had more hours in the day or more days in the week and stuff like that. Have you all encountered kind of the same, some of the same situations with that? Oh, definitely. With, uh, with school, <laughs> with a lot of assignments, you know, writing papers, it's like, oh man, you know, I need more time. This is a, it takes a lot of time to really focus and, and with a lot of distractions that are going on in this world, it's like, how, how can I, you know, be more efficient in using my time when it comes to writing a paper that's due within the next week or within a couple of days? It's like, I, I need to balance school and, and a lot of different stuff, so. Yeah. And, and you bring up a great point, Joey, where, um, being organized. A lot of the times, you know, when we say that we don't have enough time, but it's, it might be an issue of, of not managing our time right. Um, there was a, st a stat by the, the Wall Street Journal where it says that the average um, person will spend six weeks looking for misplaced things uh, or on a messy desk and stuff like that. So six weeks in, in our lifetime. So that translates to well, about in a year or in a year. That's right. Within a year. In a year. I, think, I think mine might be a little more than that. <laughs> yeah. and, it, it, and, and so it's a, a lot of the times it's about the disorganization mm -hmm. either with our activities or our desks or our office or whatever it may be. Um, do, do six I'm, weeks in one year in just one year. like looking for misplaced stuff. Yeah. That's like an yeah. hour a day, right? One hour a day, yeah. So wow. just think about the next time you're looking for your keys, the next time you're looking so for... Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, think about the next time you're looking for your keys or the next time that you're looking for... A paper um, that's a, a posted, a, a phone number. Yeah, exactly. Misfiling. I mean, I know I'm trying to... Uh, that's something that I'm avidly trying to work on. Like, what do you... What, do you all are on the same page or... Yeah, actually, kind of about the key thing. My mom has the worst tendency of losing her keys. And I'm sorry, mom, for putting you on the spot. But <laughs> even you know it's On public true. television, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, she, not only does she lose... Well, <laughs> well sometimes she loses well, her well, We'll leave it at that. <laughs> But Here's the list. <laughs> My mom. Today is grinding Ruby's mom day. <laughs> oh, I love, I'm so sorry, mom. I love you so much. But it's an example for everybody, okay? This, this will help. All right, so she loses her keys a lot sometimes. Well, okay, she loses her keys every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, well, I mean, that... She asked me, Ruby, where are my keys? I don't know where my keys are. My dad, she asked my dad, where are the keys? I don't know. And, and so it just turns into like everybody searching for keys right when she needs to leave or right when somebody needs to leave, you know? So we've made it, um, well, as a gag, I told my mom, like, I'm just going to buy you like some sort of like attachment to the key so that way it rings every time you lose it. But we, we never bought that thing. But something more practical for everybody to do is to just, when you come in, um, when you come in, do you park in your garage or park outside your house or something? Get a drawer that's right close, that's so close to the door, like right next to the door. We have a cabinet that's uh, in our kitchen when we come in through the garage, and and um, right there we we put we had a little basket inside, and we just toss our keys in there, and you never lose your keys again as long as you remember to put them in there. So they're always going to be there, and you don't need to. If you're in a rush, just go out your door, grab the keys, and take off. So that's what my mom and I have, have learned to do, and so has my dad. And, and, and that yeah, would that's happen a, that's at, a very at my house thing. too, but we came up with a uh, key bowl. Mm -hmm. So we toss them in a key bowl. And then your son. And, and then, yeah, but now we have, now the key bowl's on top of the refrigerator <laughs> because we have a uh, terrible twos that's now terrible threes, and we'll be, um, hopefully, we'll, we'll outgrow that stage soon. So today we're also throwing all our family members under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> and it's okay because and Andres can, uh, he doesn't watch the show, or maybe he does, right? Well, he, he, he does. It's like 
diocese of Bumville, you know, the diocese of Brownsville. So he likes a, a wow. shell. Yeah. So again, we're talking about organization and, and keeping our stuff together. And it always seems that we, you know, we start off today is the day that I'm organized. And, you know, we will we'll tackle our desk and I have this here and this here and this there. Um, what are, or what are some of the things that are, or that you've tried or that you've done talking about to stay organized? And, and be efficient you know we we hear the the term efficiency streamline a lot of things coming together to be you know optimal performance what are some of the things that maybe you've encountered or you've done yourself well now to put my mom back on the spot real quick <laughs> um, I would I used to be very disorganized sometimes I still am I mean we're human but when it comes to the point where it's like what do you do first like prioritize my mom always tells me make a list <laughs> and she always, it, whether it's not just for the things that we have to do, but I'm guilty of, of not cleaning sometimes. Um, so as many of, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of not doing some of my chores. And um, my mom would be like, some of your chores? But, <laughs> but yeah, um, that happens. And she's like, I need to see how long it takes you, not just for me, but for you. You need to see how long it takes you to do a certain uh, task, whether it's clean the counters or wash the dishes or maybe sweep the living room or something. Write the task that you do, see how much time it takes you to do it, you know, and just that it kind of, that kind of helps you uh, see how much, how much time it takes for you to, to do those amount of tasks. Okay. So making a list, it isn't just, just making a list in general, I think that's just a first a step because it tells you what you got to do, how much time you need to do it and where it fits within your day. So. I do something very similar that I call a projects list, and I kind of write down once a week. I have what I what you know um, what I call a brain dump or something I read somewhere that you just get a white sheet of paper and you you empty out everything that you have to do. So you list the project, and then you list the next actions. What are you know who, what's the next action I need to take to move this forward? So it's call so and so or talk to some, you know meet with somebody or whatever it is. I have the project. I have the next steps. And then, if possible, I try to put some dates to it, like when, when is it due or do this step by when. Um, in uh, principle, I mean, there, there are a number of really good ideas out there. It's training ourselves to have the discipline to, to follow through on them and to do them regularly and to do them um, habitually so that we incorporate them into our, our daily lives. I've you know, come across countless you know, best practices and tips it's the challenge of really doing something with them that is is the struggle. And, and going in line with that with that challenge that you said that you know and, and putting them into practice, what do you think are the the roots? You know, because a lot of times we you know we'll talk about um, the root of the problems or when we're looking at our, at our examination of conscience, when we're looking, you know, what sins have I done or what preparing for confessions. We look at the roots. We you know it helps through spiritual direction to or I found to find what's causing this. So now putting it into context now with, with our, our organization or lack thereof organizations, what do you think are maybe some common reasons or, or root causes for this organization or lack, thereof, lack of organization? I think for students is procrastination. Yes. <laughs> That's the number one thing, procrastination. You just don't want to deal with that certain thing because um, let's say we have a paper due and it's and it's like 10 pages long. Just the idea that it's 10 pages long, you think, oh my gosh, I cannot do this. This is just too much for me right now. And that, that same rule applies with any task that you have. Like, for example, if you need to clean your entire house, just the whole idea of cleaning your, all your house, it's just too overwhelming. And that can apply to anything in your life. Whether, when you think something is very overwhelming, when it's too big of a task, your, your mind, you immediately shut down mm -hmm. and you think, I cannot do this. All right, so then what we're getting now is intimidation. Intimidation it, it would be uh, a root cause, mm -hmm. you know, that we're intimidated by the amount of things that we need to do or, the, or just the whole sheer thing of it. And of course, you know, it, it's going to be insurmountable when you look at it that way. But I think what Miguel suggested with this, the projects list and the next actions and the dates, that That's could help kind breaking of... Breaking it down. Exactly. If I tell you, Ruby, run, uh, 
run 10 miles. I'll be like, I'll run now, thanks. <laughs> it will be one, run two blocks. And then once you get there, let's run another two blocks. Yeah. So let's run. And yeah. I think that's key, that if, that if you are able to break it down into manageable chunks mm -hmm. or manageable tasks or manageable actions, but at the same time, something that will create for you like a mini victory. You want to feel mm -hmm. a sense of accomplishment. Um, something that I've found helpful is, say, I know there's a letter that I need to draft or a you know, story I need to write or something that requires some creativity. Um, and I don't really feel it. I don't want to um, sit down to, you know, I don't feel that inspiration. Mm -hmm. Well, it helps sometimes to l look at something, uh, whether it's a short, you know, two, three, five minute video clip on YouTube or something that will just get my mind kind of stimulated. And that is a catalyst that will get me going on something. Or um, do something that you enjoy doing as a primer for this larger task. So I've found that as, as useful. And at the same time, there's a saying, maybe you can help me translate it from Spanish to English, that, that says, uh, cuando, cuando la inspiración te llegue, más vale que te encuentre trabajando. You know, it's like, don't wait for inspiration. You might uh, as well start now. Might yeah. as well, you know, yeah, inspiration. If, if inspiration comes and it finds you at work, then you're in good shape. But if you're always just sitting there waiting for, in, you know, mother inspiration, um, she may not show up, you know. Well, I mean, it's not like, you know, like in the transfiguration where, you know, the clouds aren't always going to open up and be like, this is my beloved son, listen to him. You know, it's not going to come to us like that either. We all wish it would, though. Exactly. <laughs> Joey, what, what, what can you tell us, like, you know, being a, uh, you're a college freshman, right? Yes. So what, what are some of the things that you've encountered that maybe through co the, your um, classmates or people, friends that are in the same situation, be the voice of college students. What do you think is another root cause for this organization? Well, I think another root cause is priority. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some, like, well, including myself, I, I tend to prioritize, you know, certain things. But if, if I see, you know, like if I'm having trouble or uh, in one class or one class is tougher than another, uh, you know, the assignments coming from that class, I would, you know, put that one, I would try to do that one first and let the other ones, you know, come later. And turns out, you know, that doesn't always work out well because the, the aspect of doing, you know, uh, the harder work first and, the, like, you know, it's not really, it's, it's real stressful, you know, and it's like I try to do something that's uh, extremely hard and then go to something easy, but it's not, it doesn't always work that way because, you know, there's different factors that go into it. And it's also demoralizing, like Miguel was saying, you got to have to do those, yeah, those it, little it's victories. Like you, if, if you go and you work on something hard and you're just like, it's kicking you in the butt and you're just like, oh man, I don't know if I could do this. And then you're, you know, you do not want to do the other work. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's like a, uh, you know, a domino effect. It's just like one bad thing after another, after another. And you're, you know, like you said, it demoralizes you. Um, to really just have a lot of, you know, I guess, fear. And that's, that's one of the things that, that works with... The uh, intimidation, the fear, the lack of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and what he was mentioning, Joey, um, I think you, you're spot on. For all, all, our, all our teachers out there, I, you know, they use a, a process called scaffolding, like building on. You start on a smaller, kind of easier task, and, and you, you know, build on that. Yes. So... All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a break, guys. Uh, remember, this could be a good time to log on to our Facebook and talk to us. What are some of the issues that you have uh, with organization? Maybe we can talk about it and, and you can help each other out there. So we're going to take a break. We've been looking at the reasons for disorganization, and now we're going to talk about practices to help us with uh, disorganization. So stay tuned. This is Young Adult Matters. Thank you, guys. Welcome back to Young Adult Matters. We've been talking about organization or lack thereof and the different um, reasons why we're disorganized. And some of the things, just to recap, has been intimidation. Whether you're overwhelmed or you're intimidated by the task at hand, you know, organizing your desk or, or not prioritizing things or putting things off, the procrastination. So again, I want to welcome Miguel, Ruby, and Joey. We've been talking about this and so obviously we know that it's an issue, it's, it's happening and it's in front of us. But what are some of the ways or some of the tools, you know, I can't, if we wanted to, to build a sculpture, we can't just say, 
sculpt. You know, we need <laughs> tools. We need uh, different things. So, what are some of the tools that we can use to handle or to take care of this organization issue that you all know First of? First of all, I think you need discipline. Discipline, discipline. so much. Um, in your own life and uh, Miguel shared with us that it takes about 21 days for you to build that habit into your daily routine. Mm -hmm. so a habit, like any habit? A, a like habit. A hab yeah, like a habit. for me, putting on my seatbelt. If I were to do it for 21 days, put on the seatbelt before starting the car, no cops out there watching, uh, <laughs> um, maybe I would have that kind of ingrained or, mm -hmm. or build that habit into my daily living. So definitely it's going to take some work and it's going to take First of all, it's going to take our initiative and our desire to want to do it and to remember because for those 21 days, that initial moment, it's, it's work, mm -hmm. you know, and, and already, then Already 21 days up. to some people, that sounds intimidating already. Yeah. So. so let's do it for a week. Think about it like this. Just take it one day at a time. Yeah. You know, I mean, 21 days, it sounds like a lot. And we were talking about when you, when you have a big task at hand, it's really intimidating. Mm -hmm. So basically what I'm trying to say is, Take it bit by bit. Yeah. Have it in increments. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I was in, in band, I know you were in band too, Joe. I'm mm -hmm. sure some, uh, my, my band director, as well as maybe some other ones, um, well, he told me, um, he was a band director for, for um, clarinet. I was in the clarinets, and he said, if you don't want to practice, take it like this. Just practice five minutes a day. And we were like, what? Like five minutes a day, really? He's like, yeah, because take it little by little because even though I want you to practice half an hour or an hour just take it five minutes at a time That's and, then, commit and then to just keep minutes. just commit to those five minutes and then you're gonna be like well I already did five minutes I went by really quick you know what maybe another five minutes and then those five minutes will escalate to uh, 15 and half an hour you know um, it's it you're going with the little victories that you said yeah. just overcoming that you're gonna be like you know what I can do this and that kind of just snowballs into you building a better habit. In fact, that's a personal story, and I'll take out the violence. That's how I read the, the, the Gospels. I was, um, I was talking with, with Angel, a director of youth ministry office, and an uh, old friend of mine, and we were talking about how I said, I need to, I need to, read, more, I need to read the Bible. You know, I'm, I'm a Catholic, but I haven't read the, the Gospels. And so he said, read five minutes, and with the same principle, but with, to build the, the habit, but you need to have a trusted system. And that's something that I've read now through getting things done or different things through productivity. Um, it's a hobby of mine to re read up on that stuff. I like all the productivity, streamlining, all that type of stuff. And it says to um, have a trusted system to fall back on. And like in our faith journey or in our lives, sometimes we need that trusted system. Thank you, sacraments. You know, the sacraments are that trusted system to help us stay on track with the sacrament reconciliation with the Eucharist. Same thing for, for organization, have that trusted system. So I would read the Bible, read the Gospels, five minutes, no more, no less. I committed to five minutes. But after a while, not only did I get through the Gospels, but then I build that habit to, okay, I can handle more than five minutes. So then I started reading 10 minutes and then spending some more time, whatever I can. So it's having that trusted system to build those habits mm -hmm. and to, you know, train yourself. You know, it's like working out a muscle. You know, you don't, you're not going to, like, again, with the running, we're not going to run 10 miles right now, but if we run maybe a mile, and then we can run two miles, and then we can handle it and build ourselves. So that's... Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there are, there are tools. For instance, how cool would it be, how cool would it be to, I mentioned I struggle with a seatbelt, to open my door and have my car talk to me and say, <laughs> remember to put on your seatbelt. You know, I mean, if, if I had that kind of help, I think it'd be a lot easier for me to put on the seatbelt. But nowadays there are a host of applications on our phone, a computer, that can be those tools that can give us little reminders, that can big, give us little hints. And I know you use one called uh, Remember the Milk. Remember the Milk, yeah. It's on the website. It's also available on the phone. Dot com? Yeah, RememberTheMilk.com is, is a very, it's a good one. It's basically what that one is, is a, um, it's a digital task to-do list that you can, but what sets it apart from you writing it down is that you can set reminders, you can set, and, and then you can link it to, like, let's say your Google account. Many phones out there are now linked with Google and your Google account, so it'll pop up on your calendar, like, do this. And so you can set up the, the task 
and then, then you can complete, um, you know, once you're done, you say, okay, I, I've completed it. And then you, you can customize it on how you, how the layout is and stuff like that. So remember like the milk stuff is Stuff at one. home, stuff in the office, stuff mm -hmm. at... Um, Definitely, yeah. Or if I'm going to... Books gonna, to read or... Yeah, or if I'm going to, you know what, I have some time to sit at the computer. So you list all the things that you need to do at your computer. Or I'm going to be at the phone and you can write it down. So remember the milk is a good one. And of course, like any other ones, there's the free one and then the unlimited, the pro version that goes a little bit more. But then there, there's, other, there's other apps. I know um, there's one, Good Habits. And it's basically the same thing and you schedule it. Um, do you all know of any other tools that we can use maybe? There's Evernote and <clears throat> Catch. Evernote, Catch. Um, what, 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 uh, like I use Catch, I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. It, you know, uh, because one of the things that I've read out there is if you have a thought, write it down. Because that, mo especially as you get older, that moment of brilliance will escape you. That, if you don't take the time to write it down, you know, you'll forget about it. So um, write, write it down is probably a, a great suggestion. But now as we have our phones and, and kind of rely on our phones for a lot of things, this real cool little app will let you take a picture of something and, and you have it on your phone and you have it, it syn synchronizes that online. Or if you have a thought, you just speak to it and it's there, it's on your computer. Um, same thing with, um, say, a website, you can capture that, that image. So it, it kind of serves as a hub. The name of it speaks for itself, you know, catch. You mm -hmm. just catch whatever thought, idea, uh, resource, website, book, and, and you have it available on your phone, on your computer, and, and you can refer to it regularly. So what is Evernote? Evernote, I don't know too much about, but it has the same gist it, it's of it. The same, they're, it's mm -hmm. a, they're about the same mm -hmm. as Catch. It's just it's a different layout. It's about like Catch and Remember the Milk. It's just how they yeah. a, a, approach doing it. And mm. just FYI, you guys, like these apps, are they're free unless you want the pro version. Yeah. You know, those cost money. But, I mean, even those, those people who may not have a smartphone, I mean, you can still... We're, we're human. There's so many mm -hmm. things coming into our minds. Like so many... So many things and stuff mm -hmm. that comes into our daily lives. So, I mean, we can't remember everything. So when you can, like Miguel said, just write it down. If mm -hmm. you don't have a phone in handy, just carry um, maybe just a little post-it notes or, or a just planner. a little, okay. yeah, a planner. A planner or mm -hmm. some a little writing pad in your purse mm -hmm. or if you're a guy, you know, you want to carry a tablet or notebook type of thing or because mm -hmm. we don't yeah. usually carry purses. <laughs> <but> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and besides the apps, you know, uh -huh. Madonna lived in a material world. We live in an app world. There's plenty. So <laughs> search the market, search the app store, search whatever it is for all these apps. There are tools. But besides just the tool, the, the apps, there's, I don't want to call them systems, but there's systems. Like, for example, I mentioned getting things done. That's a book. There's a book, Getting Things Done, that has a system. And it, it's, there's a real cool diagram that helps you to organize and take care of the tasks that you need to do. For example, mm -hmm. you, you know, there's the, like you said, the brain dump. And then you look at something that needs to be done and can I do it within 30 seconds? And if the answer is yes, then do it. Again, same thing, the thoughts in your mind, go ahead and do it. And then, no, I can't do it right now. So then it, it shows you, well, then you incubate it, you know, you just let it sit there or you delegate it to somebody else or you defer it to something else. Uh, to another delegate to another person defers you d take it to a, a different action and then it, and so then you can move forward with that and then if you look at it on the other side yes it is action where I can do it in 30 seconds either you do it now or you toss it and and then it and then of course it gets much more extensive I mean there's seminars and uh, on this stuff that people go to over a whole weekend with mr. David Allen yeah with David Allen and um, so look for this stuff. There's Fred Pryor seminars on uh, that also talk about the same thing, organization, communicating. So there's different things that you can use, programs that are out there to help you, again, build the habit. And, and let me ask you, um, how about old wisdom? Can we think of anything we learned from our parents or our grandparents or just maybe mentors out there that have made a difference in your lives? Any, any best uh, practices or suggestions or what comes to mind as like a something you know shared from for me you know it's been uh, Bishop Peña you know working together at campus ministry um, seeing him and how he's been able to um, or how he does things he's very 
I want to say simple, but a better word would be uncluttered. The way when he types an email, when he types up a document, there's no fan, there's not a fancy do, uh, fonts, there's nothing crazy formatting. It's just basically it's there. When you sit in his desk, you know it's it's simple, it's uncluttered, and you know like we mentioned earlier, we'll spend six weeks in a year looking for a misplaced thing. So one thing I've learned from him is to unclutter, and in reading from productivity stuff, you know don't put something. Oh, I'm going to put it here and I'm going to clean it later. Do it now, you know, mm -hmm. clean. The, the more uncluttered and, and laid out things, I've learned from Bishop Peña that you can be, you know, it's been more very effective. Productive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Joy? Do you have anything that... Oof. Uh, well, I think, I think one thing that I really learned was from my, from my dad. Uh, he, you know, being the head of the household, he would always tell me, if you're not going to do it now, you're not going to do it ever, so do it right now. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that, that just kind of stayed with me. It's, you know, do it now. And, and sometimes it's hard to because, you know, you have other things that you want to do or, you mm -hmm. know, it, of course, a priority thing again. And it may not sound, you know, important, but the, I guess the main thing that I did learn from <coughs> my dad was, you know, it's either do it now or you're going to have, you know, a, a, pro a problem later. I had a teacher, a choir teacher, um, Mr. Snyder, he said, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right the first time. Because if you don't do it right the first time, you gotta do where, it again. Where, well, where are you going to find the time to do it right the second time? And, mm -hmm. you know, it's something over three years that, I've, that we were together that I, I learned, that I kind of pieced all of that together, and it, and it makes sense for that. Ruby, how about you? Do you have any, anything to share? Well, right now I can't think of anything. Uh, I can think of something. Okay. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, like, like for my family members, but I guess just in an experience of actually living it, um, sometimes I would I would take on too much. Mm -hmm. As a person, I mean, sometimes you think you can do this and you can do that and you can do this other thing, and you 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 build so much in your life because you have so many roles. Like we mentioned at the beginning, some of us are students and we're family members and and all these other things. And and for me, I mean, I have my job, I have my little brother to take care of. Well, my mom goes to school. I have housework that I normally don't do sometimes. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but um, we think we can take on so much, and 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 eventually that that causes us to a little bit break down. But uh, what I'm trying to say is, is when when we take the time to actually do just the small things, you know, it, it, it ends up becoming something so much more. Like, we can get those things done. So, I guess that was, that's right. just it. Like, I don't really think of anything else right now. Kind of judging from, um, you know, my, my grandma would, would share with me, I, two things come to mind. One is, she would, she would always um, encourage me to ask myself, is this the best use of your time right now? And I think that's a cool phrase. Is, is this the best use of your time right now? And then also she told me, um, keep a writing pad by your bedside. Because sometimes you will get these thoughts in the middle of the night that won't, maybe won't let you sleep. Well, if you just jot them down, you kind of transpose them from your mind to the paper, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to have a restful night. Well, those are great ideas and stay organized. The most important thing is do something and take action. Thank you for joining us at Young Adult Matters. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. -bye.